So, we are just sent a message, a question to the Ayatollah. Mm. Would you like to read it to the listening audience here? This is history in the making. Uh. Right, this is like hello, slam, and dunk. You on the camera? Oh, yeah. I have to put lips on that. Okay, this is a letter to the Ayatollah Khomeini. As distinct from Khomeini, this is Khomeini, who is currently the supreme leader of Israel. Uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, of course, is the president, but he is actually underneath the supreme leader, who is a lawyer. He knows the law, Islam's law. And he has his own personal website and people write to him asking questions all the time and he writes back his answers according to the law of Islam. Things pertaining to marriage and money and rent and prayer and sex and all kinds of things. <laughs> However, uh, under the um, subject heading of culture and society, I did ask him a question after a lengthy dialogue. I'll just read it to you. Peace be upon you. My question is asked at the end of this information which is necessary for your blessing and edification. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, has been back on the earth since his rebirth date of January 11th, 1944 into Sydney, Australia at 2.22 a.m. All souls reincarnate. His teachings as Jesus have been manipulated to remove the knowledge from the people by the same Pharisee Jews who controlled the temple and crucified Jesus. They are themselves back now in the leaders of Israel, Rome and Britain. The Christ is identified by the measurements and the location of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The pyramid is the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt and is a prophecy in stone that has been revealed, read and fulfilled by the Christ who is the King of Judah, the key of the house of David and the true King of the United Kingdom. The house of Windsor is condemned as being counterfeit and along with Western Christianity as the beast that gives power to the abomination that makes desolate the nation of Israel as recorded by the prophet Daniel. The prophet Isaiah recorded the coming of the Christ as Jesus the son of Mary and the second time as the Lord and Master of God's vineyard and he will utterly destroy the evil ones who have kept the vineyard for themselves. The Christ destroys them with the truth, which is the double-edged sword from within his mouth. The Christ has a new name, fulfilling the prophecies of the Revelation 3.12, 19, 12 and 13. That name is Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. The Christ has condemned Israel and its Western supporters and has called for the elimination of the State of Israel. The Zionist is the cancer of God's creation that must be removed. All non-Zionist Jews and Christians must have the opportunity to hear the news of his return and to repent of their rejection of the Christ. The Christ has been addressing Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and advising what to do through videos published on the YouTube. The Christ does nothing in secret and exposes darkness. The Protocols of Zion, number 14, simply states, We shall forbid Christ, and they have, by way of owning and censoring all Western media, stopping any news from being 
published, including his being in Papua New Guinea and Fiji and taking the cures for people's diseases, including the American-made AIDS, cancers, malaria, etc. The meek of those nations know of his return and await the day when the entire world knows it. It will be their liberation from their nation's Zionist puppet masters. Israel's Mossad knows of his return and has attempted to kill the Christ six times, including the use of cyanide placed within his food that he did eat. But of course, he did not die. The agent responsible for the cyanide attempt, in shock, admitted then that Brian Lenigo Lightly Marshall is the Christ and told him that the Jews would rule the world. The Christ replied, you are not Jews and you will not rule the world. That was in 1996 in Canada. The government of Canada knows exactly who he is and is complicit in the genocide of native Canadians and in their support of Israel. What will defeat Israel and free the Palestinians and all peoples of the world is the public announcement to all nations in every tongue of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. The nation chosen by God to bring paradise to all peoples is Iran, with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the political leader, working beside the Christ. Without a single shot being fired, Israel can be eliminated. The news of the Christ's return will spread like a refining fire throughout the African nations who also await the return of their beloved Lord Jesus Christ. The fire will burn the dross of the nations of the West who have rejected the Christ. They too, knowing full well who he is today, but have chosen to serve the beast Israel and its puppet masters in Britain and Rome. It is time now to meet with the leaders of Iran. They must personally meet with the Christ and avail themselves of the evidence of the Christ while learning the truth of God hidden by himself and only revealed by his Christ as he measures God's temple, the earth. The future of Iran and the creation rests upon the meeting of the leaders of Iran with the Christ. All prophecy of his revealing is to be fulfilled in the next few weeks of 2012. My question is how soon can the Supreme Leader and President Ahmadinejad arrange to meet with and then dedicate the time necessary to go through all of the evidence the Christ desires to present to Iran's brightest minds. Not only is God great, he is love, and love is the highest form of intelligence. I, the Christ, Brian Lenigo Lightly Marshall, can be reached in Australia, and then I'll put in the telephone number. My email is monitored by the spy agencies and therefore not reliable. I look forward to hearing from you in love and peace for all mankind. <coughs> the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Leonard, go lightly, Marshall. And then I got a lovely little notification that my mail had been successfully sent. And to expect a reply within 72 hours. <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, we woke up this morning and, and the question was um, contacting a reporter of Press TV in, in Brisbane because to our surprise, there are actually reporters affiliated with Press TV in Australia. So rather than go to a, a simple reporter, <laughs> since I found that I could, go straight to the top. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, so that's what I've been up to today. And I think it's time to go for a bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> My new bike. $20 at the Salvo. The spokes were all breaking, weren't they? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, you beautiful pink, like it? A, a beautiful pink pearlescent bike, but the uh, spokes, every one of them was very thin and rusting, so we've um, ordered a bunch off YouTube and YouTube, <laughs> eBay. <laughs> ordered a bunch off eBay and already <clears throat> replaced a lot of them. Gives you something to do, doesn't it, babe? <laughs> Something about wheels within wheels, but we're yes. talking about wheels very within Ezekiel. wheels here. So, <laughs> yes, what, very Ezekiel. What's like. Ezekiel's number in three one six eight. So you'd expect the Lord Jesus Christ three one six eight to be 
working on wheels within wheels and replacing spokes. <laughs> so, okay. so we have a, uh, a transparent motor that works on magnets. Oh, another wheel within wheels. Right. Mm. All out of clear acrylic. Yep. You see the man gets a bit of it's like a bubble. Mm. Exciting. Mm. So we've got to pick it up. You can't trust the scent. No. No. Unless we insure it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do that? However, you've built out a lovely trailer. I was looking forward to the road trip <laughs> <laughs> with our trailer. <laughs> sort of running out of uh, options. Mm. You really think they want us on a road trip? Of course not. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We've already done it. Takes us back to Friday the thirteenth. Oh, I had enough. Mm, April. Mm. I condemned the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. They are disgusting. They are, totally. So they're gone, they're out here. And immediately, uh, the rostrum blocked it. Mm. Delayed announcing it for five days, though. Mm. Taking up the 19th. According to Wiki, Zionist, come here for all of your knowledge. We'll feed it to you. See, the Muslims are looking for number 19. We've already given just two. Mm. Now, what I haven't uploaded yet is uh, Susan's statement where she's talking and I'm talking over and stopping it and we're discussing it. That's a lovely one because she's such a lovely person. Right? Mm. Well that's gonna go up like a scud missile. Everyone on earth can relate to that. Mm. <laughs> so seven one seven Six three. Six three. Oh. Would you like to explain? <coughs> Susan Linda, former CIA asset. She'd been a CIA asset for years. And she was the liaison with Iraq and uh, she explains what happened throughout all of 2001 it began early in the year March of 2001 it reminds me of um, we've heard this before World War Two Japan was already speaking peace, wanting to surrender, speaking peace, but no, they weren't ready. They needed to have their bombs dropped because it was all experimental, see what would happen. And then a the man named Lawrence. Then before that, of course, Hitler was talking about peace with England, but uh, Churchill, not a Zionist supporter. I rented a farm of a man named Lawrence where I was minting the coins. Mm. Anyway, Susan uh, tells her story that the... Uh, the knowledge of planes hitting the towers was common knowledge 
in the CIA and she was sent as the liaison to deliver a message to Iraq. The message was to go to Saddam Hussein and he was to give up any information he had on terrorists that would be plotting and planning such a thing. So her story is intriguing but it's also extremely um, it's yes, but easy to relate to because she is such an open book, an intelligent woman, true woman, who tells it the way it is. She doesn't embellish on anything, she just tells what she knew of the advanced knowledge of the attack on the towers um, and the orchestration of it. So, Extreme Prejudice is her book. She, of course, was um, vilified and uh, arrested. She was the first under the Patriot Act to be arrested, sent to prison, held there without trial and they were trying to have her committed as insane, mentally unstable and to um, get her onto a course of um, drugs, chemical, the bottom of her and her partner at the time started a blog and then the, the bloggers just hammered on the door of the judge. The, in the end she was released and uh, she was released to write her book, The Truth of What She Knew as a CIA Asset, about the orchestrated events within the CIA. And of course we know now what she didn't know then was that um, the link with Mossad behind it. She doesn't talk about Mossad's connection, she personally did not know of it, but of course it is known now and, and their exposure has been all over the place in the last two years or so. But you knew there was something? Oh yeah, she talked freely about it. The, the, it was common knowledge, it was the topic of conversation. The attack on the towers was the topic of conversation from March of 2001. That's her whole point, is that they knew... You know, the, the way I, I, she presents it is, it doesn't matter who did what to who. The point is that the government, the CIA, knew that the attacks were going to happen and they thought it was going to happen in the last weeks of August and it didn't take anybody's surprise. They knew it was going to happen. Well, of course, they knew it was going to happen because they were orchestrating it. And her boss, who uh, opened not his mouth to utter a word in her defence, was paid $13.9 million tax-free to say nothing about the planned attack on the towers that everybody within the government was well aware of. CIA and certain government people. Why, and she why said, didn't the rumour get to the people in, in the towers? Well, they, they didn't well, want it. It was common knowledge. Well, it was a yeah, sacrifice. Sure, yeah, a common knowledge within the government. Yeah, yeah, yes, but common knowledge within the CIA and certain government Three at the top, Cheney, Bush, yeah, but and. One of these people in the CIA, their wives work in the bloody building. Well, perhaps they weren't they in the building at the time. Well, perhaps they weren't in the building at the time. The Jews weren't there and the others were, because they weren't told. They're the sacrifice. We don't know whose wives were or, or husbands were in there who, who knew of what and didn't go to work that day. We just know that there were people in the building, many more than has been reported, and they all died. The Holocaust. Thank you, Moffat and the CIA. Mm. And because of it, they've gone into Afghanistan. So all those lives lost, American lives and every other international soldier who's gone to fight along with them, supposedly seeking well, out the terrorists. They're dispendable, they're in a storm. Oh, of course they are. And then, uh, not to mention the millions dead in Iraq and every other. Strawman. Libya. Strawman. All the unrest throughout the Middle East, Egypt, Yemen. Strawman. It's all orchestrated. And they were the nations named by the former... They got a put option on general who uh, exposed the game plan. It was, all, it was all part of their end time plan. Take out these nations, they, ha they cannot resist the new world order, which is Israel. And Rothschild and Britain behind it. No. As, much, as much as Israel is the, the demon dog here, the rabid dog, 
the, um, the puppet masters are Rothschild and the British throne. So don't let anybody forget that. Netanyahu and Ariel Sharon, they're just scum, vermin, totally fucked in the head. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But they've been used. Too stupid to do otherwise. That's what evil is. Utter stupidity. Isn't it? Yep. So, small child is born, small child will leave them. They were defeated at 2.22 a.m., 11th of January, 1944, when the Christ child was reborn to the earth. His second coming. We shall forbid Christ. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. Can't forbid God. You can't kill him and you can't forbid him. So, life goes on. We will enter paradise without the vermin. Cancer will have been exorcised from the earth. And the real men and true women will reproduce God in the flesh. Your children. It's all the shows around. Mm. They're the most beautiful people. They are, absolutely. They've kept themselves pure. And they make great ice cream. <laughs> yeah. To liberate all the young women of Iran. Mm. Do it Muhammad's way. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> simple corrections of their over the top laws. Just so they realise that um, God is a whole lot more than just great. <laughs> So we should be there in the next short weeks. I'd say the uh, 14th of November would be a good day. Hmm. So if they could kill me between then and now, they would. Hmm. Is that the time clock? That's going to be 942 miles. Mm. Where was I? Mm. We beat Prince Charles to the punch for 10 hours. Mm. What they should have done is had. Elizabeth in Australia give birth. And that's a problem to me. <laughs> Too late. Yeah. Too late. Baby, no, it's too late. <laughs> okay, babe, we're going to let this one go up. Yeah. We've got a bike ride happening. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> what are you going to call it? <laughs> they make great ice cream in a <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs>